Welcome to the Men of Integrity, men that rescue men and women. And as always, we are delighted that you've joined us for a journey through the Word of God. I would love to hear the testimony of how God is blessing you. My email is on the screen. You can email me and tell me how God is miraculously working miracles in your life in days and times like these. God is true to His Word, mm -hmm. and every believer can expect the impossible. We have Apostle J. Edward Fisher with us tonight, our co-host. What do you want to share with the people tonight? Well, I'm excited about the Lord, my own self, but I want to thank those that are encouraging us in the marketplace. Somebody, um, uh, I met a lady uh, the other day, and she said, she said, you're one of those that are on the television with Bishop Shaw. And I said, yes, I am. And uh, she said, well, just keep on doing what you're doing, you know. They're enjoying it, so... Uh, she said, how's Bishop Shaw? I said, he's all right the last time I saw him. <laughs> hey, we're doing wonderful, blessed of the Lord and highly favored. Thank you guys so much for watching. But listen, we need your help. The KPLU television station is looking for some Gideon participants uh, for a season at such a time as this where the voice of God is so important. You have to hear me on that. The voice of God is so important. We cannot allow the enemy's voice to be greater than the voice of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because he has the words to eternal life. He has the answer to your problems, to your children's problems, and all of those that are incarcerated and those that are in uh, nursing homes, Apostle, and, and those that are homebound mm -hmm. that need a word from God. Uh, yes. And these television programs that KPLE is sponsoring is changing the lives of people, and we need to keep that going. So what we need you to do is partner with KPLE. Glory to God. Yes. And sow that seed of faith. The address is on the screen. If you want to know more about it, pick up the phone and call. Uh, the phone number is on the screen. Uh, stop by the TV station and meet the staff. And, and whatever it takes for you in this season, in this time, to sow a seed of faith to KPLE, we need your support because we must amplify the voice of God. Yes. Somebody is waiting on the word tonight, Apostle. Yeah. Right. And I'm so grateful that we're able to be a part of this life-changing experience. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Bishop. Um, this is an exciting time to just be a Christian in a world that seems dark, but we shine as lights, and the gospel is the truth, and the truth is in Jesus. <laughs> Amen. You know, I know you're going through some things. I know you're suffering some things, and I I know that the weight is upon you mm -hmm. and, and you're feeling some kind of way. But the apostle has a question for you tonight <laughs> that he's going to ask you before we jump into this. And I want you to think about this question the whole night while we're teaching. Well, as Jesus was looking at the multitude and by, especially by the pool of Salon, he asked a question. He said, will thou be made whole? And I'm asking you the same question tonight. Will you be made whole? And I tell you what, the gospel of Jesus Christ is the only truth that can make you whole on today. You know, you're so absolutely right about that. And that's the question. You're going through some things, but God wants you to be made whole tonight mm -hmm. through the Word of God. Yes. As a matter of fact, we're going to do something a little different tonight. Apostle is going to pray for you tonight before we get into this Word, because I just feel the presence of God that is ready to break some strongholds over your life, to take your faith to another dimension so that you will be able to operate in the principles of God. Yeah. Apostle, lead us. And I'm going to ask you out there in television land, put your hands on the television. Just let's make a contact and have an agreement. Our gracious Father, we just come in the name of Jesus. We reverence your name for holy is your name. Uh, we thank you for this special time. And look up on those that are touching the television. Maybe somebody is sick. Maybe somebody is discouraged. But let your power 
just flow and, yes. and yes. your presence, uh, there's joy in your presence. And let your presence do what only your presence can do, heal, deliver, make free, encourage, lift up our heads uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. And we count it done in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Listen, my beloved, tonight we're coming from 2 Corinthians 1 and 20. Mm -hmm. And it says, for all the promises of God in him are yea, and in him amen, unto the glory of God by us. Mm -hmm. I want you to know that one of the kingdom principles of God is the principle of promise. Mm -hmm. God has made us promises, okay? And God has promised you something through the prayers of your forefathers, your grandparents, your church, your pastor. God has made promise, glory mm -hmm. to God. And I'm excited about the promise that God has made concerning your life. And that's why we asked them the question this morning, I mean tonight, of whether or not you will be made whole. Mm -hmm. The promises is there, but the question is whether or not you're ready to embrace God's promise and be made whole. Yeah, and we're talking about, when we talk about being made whole, we're talking about not just physically, but psychologically, yes. uh, soulish, spiritually. I mean, God uh, deals with the total man, Bishop. Yes. And, um, uh, and he's uh, um, uh, out and making us totally uh, the sons of God as we should be. And so it is a process, but God is able to do it and he's mightily working to do it. And all of the promises that Bishop just said are yea and amen in Christ Jesus. So God has already made promises. Well, he doesn't have to make any promises, but he's made enough promises that we become partakers of his divine nature. And so um, it's already been laid before the foundation of the world, so but we have to walk in it, Bishop. You, you're so absolutely right. Whatever is going on with you, mm -hmm. there has been a promise by God's word. That's right. To fulfill. That's why you have to decide whether or not you're going to be made whole. Mm -hmm. That's why you have to decide tonight whether you are ready to fully embrace what God would have for you. Mm -hmm. And Apostle, that starts with prayer. Mm -hmm. There are some levels of prayer that cannot be taught. Trouble has to teach you. Okay? <laughs> you, 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 understand, you understand? That's some troubles that God allow you to go through. They really have no power to destroy you, mm -hmm. but they do have the power to make you intercede with God to develop your faith that you can be made whole because God has a promise over your life that he's ready to bring to pass. But in order for that promise to come to pass, you have to be made whole first. Yes, uh, and th those prayers, why says here, you're right. Trials will bring prayers, and I'll tell you what, it will not only just bring you down to praying, but it will construct your prayer. Why does it say it will specialize your prayer? And, and God allowed it to happen because he knows you and he knows what you will ask, but he yes. needs you to ask. Yes, yes. You know, how can your womb be filled with promise when your heart is filled with bitterness? Yeah, that's right. And see, God wants to get that bitterness, that resentment, that aggravation, frustration, and irritation out of your life, mm -hmm. that brokenness, God wants to get out of your life, that fear, that fainting, he, he's got to get that out of your life. And that's to what being made whole is all about so that he can fulfill the promises of God in your life. You know, if you're broken and struggling and halfway making it, God can't put no weight on you because <laughs> if he does, all of that stuff is going to fall. But once you remove what is hindering you, God will move men to set up his promises in your life. Mm. He won't do it without them. He will do it through them. Right. So God is ready to release some promises in your life. Glory to God. But you got to get rid of those hindrances and be made whole so God can move you into the promises of God. What do you think about that? Yeah. Well, you're right because, and this is what he says to give you a glimpse of what he's doing. He says, count it joy. Yeah. Now watch this here. It may not feel like joy and you may be in heaviness, but watch this here. But the ultimate is that uh, God is working something out in you that's far better uh, and is going to change the place and transform you from the place you're in to the place he wants you 
to be. It yes. says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And once you get a hold of that, mm -hmm. watch this here, God is just working it out. It's not going to destroy you, but it's going to make you better. <laughs> You're absolutely right. You know, God won't take you through anything that he won't get you out of. Mm -hmm. The real test is never what we don't have. The actual test is when God brings you out, will you still remember him? <laughs> <laughs> the principles of promise are built on covenants. Mm -hmm. God blesses those he can trust. Mm -hmm. And see, we're going to have trust factors. We're going to have insecurities until we have been made whole by the power of the Holy Ghost. It's in our nature to be ruled by our thoughts and our feelings, which are highly influenced by our circumstances, family, work, health, or even temptation. When we receive Christ, God's plan for us is no longer participate in your old nature, but in his divine nature, which you just alluded to. Mm -hmm. Okay. Second Peter 1, 3, and 4 tells us we can actually do this because it comes from learning to respond to his promises. Yes. And that's what we should be doing, responding to what God has promised us and not falling prey to what we think is impossible. Yeah, and responding according to God's way. You understand what I'm saying? Sometimes we can respond to what's happening, but the wrong way. Yeah. But when we know God and we know what he's doing, it will help us to respond right. Even though this trial is up on us, we know that it won't destroy us. Hallelujah. So we have hope, right? And so we know that the end is better than the beginning. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to we're gonna be all right. You know, we yeah. used to sing that song, yeah. say everything is going to be all, all right. right. It may not seem like it's all right now, but God told me to tell you. Everything is going to be all right. 2 Corinthians <laughs> 1 and 20, for all of the promises, everything that God has said Come on in him is yes. Yay. And in him, amen, through the glory of God, through us. Mm -hmm. Matthew 24 and 35, I love that particular text. He says, heaven and earth shall pass away, mm -hmm. but my word shall not fail. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Isaiah 55 and 11, he says, so my word that goeth out of my mouth, it will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve and purpose for which I sent it. You have to wrap your mind around the fact that God has made some promises to us. Mm -hmm. He says, I am the God that healeth thee. He says, I'm the God that shall supply all of your needs according to my riches and glory. He says that I will never leave you, forsake you, nor fail you. The question is, do we believe God promises? And, okay? and that's the key. Yeah. And then, then, then he says, you know, in the gospel, he says, all things are possible. There you go. To him that believe it. The question is, do you believe the word of God? Do you believe the promises that God has over your over your life, man? And, and I'm 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 I'm, I'm gonna take Apostles' uh, uh, slogan <laughs> for just one minute. And I'm gonna give it back. You know, the question you gotta ask yourself: Are you willing to be made whole? Mm -hmm. How long are you gonna live in this brokenness? Come How on. long are you gonna live in this poverty? How long are you gonna live in this fear and and, and, and lack and discouragement? You got to make up your mind that tonight I want to be made whole. Yeah. You know, David said, David gives us a cure uh, for all of these negative things. He said, he said, I would have fainted. Yes. Lest I had believed. Yes. And, and that's the key right in the net. We got to come to believe what God says. Mm. Watch this here. We may know what he says, but we have to believe it. And that will cure it all because all things are possible to him. That So that's the key. Believe. Yeah, believe. <laughs> you know, the promise is true. Mm -hmm. He said, when it's I true. can swear by no greater, I swore by myself mm. that I was going to bless you and multiply you. And you have to believe the promise of God. Apostle, the devil fights the minds of God's people because they focus on the circumstances and the situation and not on the promise of God. Right. God's going to bring you through this. God's going to heal you. God's going to deliver you. But it's going to require you to lock in on faith and promise, glory to God, and stand firm in the things of God. Now, that requires the next principle that we're going to talk about, and that is the principle of patience. <laughs> okay? right. People struggle with patience, man. You know, it's, 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 it's a detrimental thing because, you know, God requires some things, and we just have to deal with that. In Hebrews 10 and 36, here's what he says. 
for you have need of patience, mm. that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. So now we're going to ask you the question, okay? You're going through some things. You, you're still struggling with some things. So if you want to receive the promise, you have to do the will first. Uh -huh. And the will is... The Word of God. The Word of God. And here is what one of the Word of God said. <laughs> you have to be made whole. <laughs> this is not a partial thing. It's not a partial you thing. You have to be made whole. Mm. You must do what the proverbial writer says. He says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. What does that say? I have to come to a place where I am delivered, made whole, so I can operate in the totality of God's word. Yeah, and then, you know, um, uh, that patience, it says, in your patience, possess, or a uh, good way to say it is that in your patience, you control your soul. Yeah. See, this is the problem, Bishop. Watch this here. When you don't have patience, your mind will run anywhere, mm. and you will do anything, and you Ooh. will faint, <laughs> and you will have an uh, 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 anxiety and worry and everything, but when you are patient, and I'm talking about patiently waiting on God, that means yeah. that you're not just sitting there, but you keep mm -hmm. praising Him. Yes. You keep magnifying yes. Him. You keep singing the songs of Zion. Yes. You keep uh, uh, going straight, not looking to the left. Or you, you keep ministering to the Lord. You keep telling Him how great He is. You're waiting on God. You're yes. not just sitting yes. by. Yes. You understand? You, you, uh, you're doing the things that uh, letting uh, uh, the world know that, watch this here, that God is your God and he deserves the glory no matter what's going on. Yes. You know, what God asks us to do, we are doing it anyway. <laughs> because if you are not waiting to be made whole, then you're just waiting. <laughs> yeah? If you're not seeking to be made whole, then you're still just waiting, waiting for something to happen. But see, what I come to understand is that you're not waiting on God. God's waiting on you. See, you're not waiting on a miracle. The miracle is waiting on you. Mm -hmm. Because when you begin to exercise the Word of God through spoken it, or speaking it out of your mouth, through exercising it out of obedience, you bring the miracle into play. You cause God's hand to move, mm -hmm. but unless you do something, glory to God, unless you have a desire to grab the promises of God, to pull down the high places, mm -hmm. then you're just waiting for nothing. Because he says, you have need of patience, that after you have done the will of God, you have received the promise. Mm -hmm. The revelation of that to me is, is that unless you do the will of God, you're not going to receive the promise. That's right. That's right. And if you don't, and if you don't um, stand in there and haven't done all, stand there. Yes. You, uh, you're going you're gonna to miss the reward. See, a lot of people start off, and they'll start off with the will of God, Bishop, but watch this here, but sometimes the waiting or the time or the, uh, uh, or the time frame between, um, say, planting and re reaping the harvest. Yes. And so they keep digging it up to see if it's still growing, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And it ain't going to never grow. You understand? But you got to trust that the seed is good. Mm -hmm. No problem with the seed. Yeah. But, this, but it does take time. And you're going to have to have faith in the time yes. and wait until the promise comes. You know, <laughs> it, 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 it's, it's understanding patience, it's understanding mm -hmm. promise. You know, a lot of people, they come and they want me to pray that they would be financially blessed. Mm -hmm. And I say to them that I really can't pray that prayer because that prayer requires an action on your behalf. That prayer requires you to give. Mm -hmm. If you say you have nothing to give, then there is nothing for you to receive. <laughs> because the Bible in Luke 6 and 38, it says, Give, and it shall be given unto you a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Okay? Shall men give unto your bosom. Mm -hmm. And he says, With the same measure that you meet, 
it shall be measured to, to you, you again. again. See, it requires you to understand the promise. The promise in this scenario is that if you give, it will be given to you. Mm -hmm. Okay, So I have to exercise faith. Now, I tell people all the time, you know, you in church, and I'm just using this for an example, and you come by and you touch the tray, that's not going to get you blessed, okay? <laughs> that's not going to get you blessed, but a penny will get you blessed, uh -huh. okay? Borrowing a penny on your way to church, finding a penny in the sofa, and sowing the penny, if that's all you have, that will get you blessed. But just laying your hands on the tray and praying and asking God to do something, that's contrary to what the writer said. Mm -hmm. So watch this. So when I now sow my seed of faith, now I have to wait on God to do what he says he's going to do. But he's not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. What God said is going to come to pass. Mm -hmm. So what are you sowing, okay? If you're sowing love, if you're sowing joy, if you're sowing peace, if you're sowing financially, if you're sowing prayers, then you can expect a harvest. Whatever mm -hmm. man soweth, that shall he also reap. But if you're doing nothing because you're broken, you're doing nothing because you're discouraged, you're doing nothing because you can't see anything, then there is no expectation of anything and nothing is going to happen. Yeah, and you know, contrary to what people believe, they think that God just starts with nothing. Yes. But God doesn't start with nothing. Mm -mm. Watch this here. God starts with himself. But watch this here. But you say, I don't have nothing. But if you got the will to sow, then the Bible says he gives seed to the soul. Now that proves that he doesn't start with nothing. Yes, yes. He's got to get you, he'll get you a seed yes. so you can sow. But some people have seed and it's a matter of semantic. Yes. They say, I don't have nothing. But what does that, what does that mean in Louisiana as compared to New York? <laughs> you, you understand yes, what I'm saying? Yes. And so, but it says, even if, if you really didn't have nothing, but you had the mind and the will to sow, he gives seed to the sower, so and then you have to sow it. Yes. And then you're going to get it. And 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 I've been in the same situation with you. People come up and they, well, I say, "What you got?" You know, some people say, "Well, I don't have a, I don't have a lot." But what you got? That's right. I say, "Give me what you got." Yes. yes. I say, "Give it to the treasurer." Yes. Then I'll pray. Yes. But we got to put this thing into motion. Yes, sir. <laughs> you know, faith without works is dead. There you go. And, and, and you have to be made whole. And being made whole is coming to a place where you are able to trust God. Come on now. And then activate that trust by faith. Mm -hmm. Okay? For you have need of patience. After you have done the will of God, God says, just let it go. Just <laughs> give it to me. Just obey me. Uh -huh. And then see what happens. But if you are timid and you're not willing to trust God and step out on God's word, then what can God do? The principles of God will not change, That's Apostle. Right. That's right. The principles of promise. Understand the promise. Believe that you have the promise. The Bible says, go to God, that we have obtained these promises of God. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we must cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and the spirit. Yeah. So if you know you got a promise, you now got to cleanse yourself from doubt. You got to cleanse yourself from fear. You got to cleanse yourself from discouragement. And you got to walk in truth and say like the Hebrew boy says, Oh, king, we're going to answer you in this matter. Our God is able. Look at your situation and tell your situation God's able. Look at your situation and say, I know God's going to make a way somehow. Oh, yeah. And then, you know, um, we got to fight this good fight. This is a, well, that's the fight we have. Yes. We fight in each other, Bishop. We fight in flesh and blood, but the Bible says fight the good fight of faith, faith yes. and lay hold, yes. lay, lay hold, lay hold on the eternal life. That's, yes. that's our fight there. Yes. <laughs> you know, it's a struggle because of the brokenness. Mm -hmm. And many people will not come to God and say to him, Lord, I'm broken. Mm -hmm. Lord, I'm hurt. Lord, I'm disappointed. Lord, I'm weary in my mind. 
This thing has had such a toll on me that I can't even see it anymore. Mm. But the promises of God are still there. The promises of God doesn't change because you had a bad experience. The promise of God doesn't change because you screwed it up and made a mistake. Apostle, the promises of God are yea and amen. Mm -hmm. And with them there is no sorrow. We have to come to the place where we plant our feet and say, you know what? God said this, I believe this, and how do I get God to do this? Man, I repent. I turn back to God. I go get baptized for the remission of my sin. I get filled with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and I get empowered by faith to be able to walk this thing out mm -hmm. with God. Yeah, and you know, uh, I like that. The promises of God are yea and amen. Yes. I mean, it's it's... It's already decided, mm -hmm. but you have to get in line. Yes. You have to get in line with it and do the things that the, uh, the promise and the principles tell you that you must do. And God watches over his word to perform it. Yeah. But he don't have to perform anything as long as you're doing something that's not the word. Absolutely. It says, for whatever things are written before were written for our learning, mm -hmm. that we through the patience and comfort of the scripture, we might have hope. That's right. Now may the God of patience and comfort grant you to be like-minded toward one another mm -hmm. according to Christ Jesus. In Psalms 37 and 9, he says, for evildoers shall be cut off. Mm -hmm. For those who wait on the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. Mm -hmm. See, it's it's the patience of God that's going to bring you the miracle, but you have to be made whole. God <laughs> can't pour into brokenness. He can't put new wine in the old wine skin. Oh, yeah. You got to come whole with God. Psalms 123 and 2, and I'll let you jump in. Behold, as the eyes of the servant look to the hands of their master, as the eyes of a maid to the hands of her mistress, mm -hmm. so our eyes look to the Lord our God until he have mercy on us. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, uh, that's where our focus has to be on God. We got to get it off of ourselves. We got to get it off of our circumstances, and we got to get it on the promises of God. Watch this here and not look to the left, not look to the right, and just stand on that word of God. And God will, watch this here, God will perform his word but, uh, because he cannot lie. It's That's impossible right. for him to lie. Yes. You understand what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Yes. And so whatever he said, that settles it. Yes. And we used to say that, right? Mm -hmm. He said, if he said it, yes. that settles it. That settles it. Mm -hmm. Will you be made whole tonight? Based on the promises of God, he promised you better. He promised you a new covenant mm -hmm. through the blood of Jesus Christ. Yes. There is not a problem that you have that God cannot solve. There's not a sickness that you have that God cannot heal. There's not a relationship problem that God cannot turn around. But you have to seek the God of the harvest and ask God to be merciful unto you and allow you to be made whole. Mm -hmm. Once you are made whole by being able to trust God by faith and operate in faith, then you will see the miraculous miracles of God. Mm -hmm. I want to say to you, we're looking for partners, amen, to join us in the Gideon movement. The address is on the screen. If God's been good to you, try his word and see if his word is not real. Come and join us at any of our services. Yeah. Glory to God. God will bless you tremendously. We are the men of integrity, and we are certainly praying for your miracle. God bless you now. Out of your belly, out of your, your shelf, Lord. Out of your